live and breathe and move and have your being, you have the opportunity to know, act, react, and interact with God himself. You see, Jesus said that when he came to the earth, that he came to reveal the Father, and that he would give to us, and he prayed for us, that we would be one with him as he is one with the Father. In that complete oneness, all questions of his divinity, of his unity, of his ability to be as God and in God and with God and God were answered when God said to his disciples, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. He said also when they went up on the mountaintop and he was transfigured or given back, you could say, his restored to his godliness or the form of all of his ability to be that which we normally assume to us esteem God-like ability and qualities of God's Son himself, then the Father said, this is my Son, listen to him. So whenever we have a question as to what really is going on in heaven or what makes sense as far as God is concerned, God himself said to listen to Jesus, to what he says. And when Jesus says, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father, then if you want to see God, all you need to do is look to Jesus. So whenever I have a question, I can lay out 30,000 different answers, all of them that sound so wonderfully theologically correct. And they are, theologically. When I have a dissertation and I want to make some kind of presentation, then I make an arrangement of the words to flow in such a way that they conform to a certain pattern of logic and reason that builds line upon line, precept upon precept, concept upon concept, so that the module comes together. But you know what's interesting is that Jesus said in the volume of the book, it is written of God? He said of me. So, when I want to know what's in the Word, or I want to know how the Word fits completely together in the volume of it, I need only ask Jesus. And since Jesus said that He stands at the door and knocks at the heart, or He stands at the door and knocks, if any man opened the door, He would come in and sup with Him and be with Him, that Jesus Himself could stand here and reveal Himself even as he does often, sitting in presence with us as two or more are gathered, we could actually sit still and let God speak to us and let him reveal his word as he chooses to fit it into your life and mine by way of his ability because he is God and we are not. God doesn't ask us to understand. He tells us to obey. Because to obey is better than sacrifice. In Tozer today, spiritual radiance comes from an inner witness. And hereby we know he abides, he lives in us by the spirit which he has given us. 1 John 3.24 How do you know he's in you? 1 John 3.24 How do you know he lives in you? 1 John 3.24 One distinguishing mark of the earliest Christians was their radiance. For the sun had come in their hearts, and its warmth and light made unnecessary any second sources of assurance. They had the inner witness. Great power and great grace marked their lives, enabling them to rejoice to suffer shame for the name of Jesus. It is obvious in our day that the average evangelical Christian is without this radiance. The efforts of some of our teachers to cheer our drooping spirits are futile because those same teachers reject the very phenomenon that would naturally produce joy, namely, which is the inner witness. 
Instead of the inner witness, we now substitute logical conclusions drawn from texts. There is no witness, no immediacy of knowledge, no encounter with God, no awareness of inner change. They are often bitter trying to prove what is right or what is wrong or what they think they know rather than know what they have experienced of God, with God, by God in them. Where there is divine act within the soul, there will always be the corresponding awareness of God himself. This act of God is self-validating. God makes himself known to the person. It is its own evidence and addresses itself directly to the religious consciousness. One song often sung in olden days spoke of his spirit answers to the blood and tells me I am born of God. To the salvation by logical conclusion, devotees, such language is plain heresy. But, but, but it can't be experience. How can experiencing God be the reality of God if it's based upon personal experience? I run to join such a glorious heretic, and may God send us many more heretics that know God personally, intimately, in reality, and not simply intellectually. In modern days, we have based so much upon faith that sometimes faith has been used to abuse a lot of what people have constructed to destruct what God has already instructed us in his word. Jesus said these sayings of mine and went about proving that he was the reality of what Christianity is. He demonstrated it by his life. He proved it by his resurrection. He exemplified it by his appearing again to his disciples and he personifies it individually in the hearts of every single individual believer that calls upon the name of the Lord because he comes into them by his inner witness because he said I will send another comforter and that spirit of God that comes into a man causes him to be born again not of the flesh because the flesh wants to prove this and demonstrate this and say how can a man be born again can he crawl into his mother's womb again of course not but being born of the Spirit. How do you know you were born of the Spirit? Because you are. It's the inner witness. But how can someone else know that? They probably can't because they don't have the inner witness. <laughs> it's a self-defeating and yet a self-realizing actualization of God being the fulfillment of the promise that I will be in them. That is what Jesus said. And so, you can either accept the fact that God said He would live in His people, or you can reject the idea that God is in you and try to negotiate some terms of salvation on some other plane of realization of some logical means with which you create a religion that will lead you to some place that I pray that God gives you the grace to understand what it is, how it is, and who it is that you're dealing with, because he created you, and he desires to have fellowship with you if you choose to open the door, because he won't force you, but he will accept you if you call upon him today.